of violence in Westbury, west of Johannesburg, and perhaps it's rooted in the past. People in the area saying that their so-called coloured uh, community has been forgotten by society and law enforcement. They've done nothing about crime and violence rife for years. Let's go back to 2014. Three-year-old Luke Tibbetts was killed in a drive-by shooting in Westbury, just one of many incidents. Journalist Paul McNally sought to uncover the extent to which police were part of the problem and what was happening in that community, uncovering fake arrests as well as police brutality involving torture. He is the author of The Street, exposing a world of cops, bribes and drug dealers. And he joins us now in studio. Thank you for being with us, Thanks uh, for having Paul. Me. So, so how long ago were you there? And I understand you were staking out on Decker's Road, basically. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I was there from 2014 and I'm still there working on an update to the street as well. So it's been a long process of spending time with the police, um, community members and also some of the drug dealers. So what did you see? Well, first of all, my first trip to Undeckers, I saw the bribes. I saw the blatant open bribes that were taking place to the police. Um, and from there it just escalated. I saw police that were willing to plant drugs on people in order to fake arrest them. Um, I saw... Um, you, you saw this or were told about it? I saw it with my own eyes. And ah, actually, How were you able to see that? Uh, well, the thing is the process of writing the book was about making friends with people that were in the community, people that desperately wanted to see change. And this is, you can imagine, way back in 2014. And when we're sitting and watching the events today, four years later, nothing has really changed. Mm. And a lot of these police officers were from Sophia Town Station. Um, and I got to see it because we were embedded on the streets of Undeckers, um, behind, um, uh, in a shop, which basically had um, one-way glass. So we were able to see all day and all night the dealers as they came out, as they dropped the bribes in with the police. Um, I, I was able to see the, the police officers and how they threatened people to put um, uh, drugs on them and then to speak to the dealers who had just had them planted on them. Because that's the interesting thing. You have these dealers who are obviously committing crimes, right? And they, in theory, should get arrested for those crimes. But the strategy that the police take is instead of just arresting them like we'd all want, they um, hold them ransom. So if you imagine you're a dealer, they hold one of these um, dealers ransom um, and then get them to phone their boss and then ask them for an escalating price in order to um, get them free. And that huge amount of money, so that might be two or three thousand rand. But the small bribes that happen constantly, and I mean constantly, in that if you sat and just watched out onto On Decker's Road, you would see it happen maybe 10 or 20 or 30 times a day. You would just see a police officer that can come and collect a very small amount of money, so like 50 rand, 100 rand. Um, and the sort of idea of it is that the, the drug dealers don't want to say no to the police, but they just want to give them a little bit of money. And when you look at what's happening now in Westbury, I want to stress that it isn't just a problem for Westbury, right, which is a relatively small area. This is something that's stretching out into West Johannesburg. This is lots of other police stations, Sophia Town, Florida Police Station, um, and it's something that is, starts with those small amounts of money. And you can think that if a police officer can get a small amount of money from a drug den, they're not incentivized to arrest those dealers in any way. They're incentivized to arrest the people in, with... In fact, it's the opposite because they're the course. source of the funds. Yeah, they're incentivized Keep to arrest... Keep them on the streets. They're, invest, they're incentivized to arrest the um, people buying drugs, right? Because that's an easy target. They're less likely to be... Um, uh, armed and they can get uh, an arrest there but if you arrest a dealer then they're essentially you're cutting off your um, revenue supply sure uh and look, the, these claims are coming up tonight. People are saying uh, cops from Sophia Town are involved in corruption. Were you seeing the same sort of dirty cops again and again and again? Or were you seeing different faces? Were you able to tell how many police were involved? Well, the interesting thing is that these are d it's the same behavior, but it's actually different police officers th than were back in 2014. It's actually a different station commander as well. So, I mean, I was looking into this, like I say, from 2014 to 2016, and I've been uh, continued to look into it for, since then. Um, and the faces change. Some actually get arrested. So there was an officer who was fired and arrested um, called Marcia, and he was involved in all sorts of corruption. He was the second in command at Sophia Town. So everyone was joyous about that, right? But 
actually nothing changed. So you can only expect that even though, like, the people are talking now that a couple of the names of police officers that are coming up, they're going to be arrested or maybe f at least fired. But there's something a lot more um, built into the culture that means, you know, for something like this, if we get rid of a few officers, it new officers might just come in. I mean, the interesting thing about that is that the dealers themselves, they actually want the top officers to get arrested and moved out. Because once an officer's been there for a long time, he or she demands more money. So from the dealer's perspective, they see the police as uh, just a ledger, like, I mean, a, a marking in a ledger, like it's mm. an expense for their business. So they want new cops to keep coming in because they're on then a lower um, wage, essentially. And the guys that have been hanging around for years, the dealers have to pay off huge amounts of money to. So corruption is endemic because there's the symbiotic relationship. Exactly, yeah. If, if you were a community resident uh, in Westbury, would you feel protected by any of the police officers? Um, well, I mean, the interesting thing is when you do a book like this and you research it, you actually meet a lot of police officers that are really good. So, the so but they're not all bad, at least yeah, we can say that. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. But, it, but, you know, policing is one of those things where it actually doesn't take many um, people that are corrupt to actually ruin the whole system. So you can't... I wouldn't feel safe if I was in Westbury, and I wouldn't feel safe if I was in any stretch of that... West Johannesburg area because you can't know that the police that you call when you need them that they'll have your best interests at heart. You speak about uh, torture and kidnappings by police. Yeah yeah I mean the interesting thing is that the I, I understand that the the drug epidemic is a problem and I understand that people want to target the drug dealers but also the sort of foot soldiers that are on the street who are dealing the drugs are often um, almost a form of human trafficking, right? They're captured by these big bosses and they're um, uh, kind of, they have their passports taken away, they're often foreign nationals um, and that kind of cycle means that they're also locked into this and they basically worked to deal drugs until they get arrested to a point where no one will pay them out or they'll die. So sure. they're often tortured by police, they're often tortured by other rival gang members. So there's a huge amount of violence that happens um, from the police to the dealers. And that's also something that isn't really in explored because people don't feel sympathy for drug dealers often. Sure. But that's also, you know, it's not something that we should really want to see happen either. So this isn't just youngsters from the communities sort of no. given an identity, recruited into these gangs. Let, let, let me just put something to you, because we were looking at some of the commentary coming out on, on social media today. Uh, somebody said, the people themselves are, are responsible. They wouldn't be this sort of crime if it wasn't those uh, young people not being disciplined, uh, not being uh, helped by their parents, and then joining these groupings. Well, I don't know. I mean... I mean, I understand that people are very upset, and I wouldn't uh, even try to try and explain how someone should parent their kids or why it's not, whose fault it is. But, I mean, I do think that the problem isn't... You can't rest the problem of this with young people and, and their parents, right? That's completely uh, just unfair. You need to rest the blame at the institutions that have the power to change what's going on around them. Mm. And that's the police, essentially, in this instance. So the police have created a mechanism which allows the drug syndicates to thrive, right? People will police always... Police are complicit, yeah. Yeah, they're complicit and they're also stoking the engine. They're creating something that is able to grow and grow. People will always take drugs and people will always sell drugs, but essentially the police are creating like a mechanism which allows it to be so much bigger than that. More commentary from someone who, who claimed to know this community well, saying there are no gangs. That this is a major gang violence. This is sort of drug, uh, drug dealers fighting with each other for turf. Yeah, it's an interesting thing. Like when I was researching the book and in, um, I was presented with gang, there are definitely gangs, especially in Westbury. Um, but the problem actually stretches much further than that. So it's, it is a drug, it is, there are drug syndicates that wouldn't associate themselves and call themselves gangs. Um, and a large part of the book is around the Nigerian drug syndicates. Um, and those, uh, and, and it's so interesting because those communities don't set themselves up as gangs, more just as businesses. And I think that that's the interesting conflict that's happening in West Johannesburg is that you have this very strong identity gang culture in a place like Westbury, but they aren't actually taking the heavy load of 
the drug culture uh, and the drug sales and all the problems that we're talking about. It's also lots of other syndicates that have come in to take over that, that area. Very quickly, because we've run out of time, sure. but uh, if, if you uh, take yourself out of that sort of objective journalism mode, what would you hope happens here? I mean, they, they're calling, crying out for officials to come onto the ground, the community members are, uh, and someone there saying, well, we are resorting to violence, but without violence, there's, there's no action in this country. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting to see when you've been watching it on the TV that it has actually caused some sort of result, right? So this protest has actually brought people um, to maybe get something done. I think, like, the demands that they've made in terms of getting some police officers at Sapphire Town um, at least fired or suspended, perhaps, I think is a good one. But I think they need to think much bigger. I mean, to me, the idea of it just talking about it as a Westbury problem, just talking about it as that community is kind of short-sighted and doesn't help their cause. It kind of, I don't want to incite a huge outbreak of protest across West Johannesburg, but this problem is much bigger than just the, the few square kilometers of Westbury. All right, fascinating. Thank you for uh, spending time with us this evening. That was Paul McNally, journalist and author of The Street, exposing a world of cops, bribes and drug dealers. And as he says there, he was based in uh, that community, uh, behind, hidden behind uh, a shop window, viewing what was going on.